Titus. That's true. Let's see if they can do something at this game. Let's see if we'll have a game three here between OG and Team Nick. We're finding out together with Lyrical and AY. Thanks so much, Shiva. Yes, indeed. And Aoi, we got to get prepped and ready for this game. So I'm going to let you take away with it as I uh, take this wonderful, delicious sip of the mate mate to give me energy. Uh, can you tell me about the draft, what you're feeling on it? I think this draft looks a lot better for Team Nygma this game. Right. Prepare for um, battle. Like last game, it just felt eventually like the draft Nygma, they were making these really good plays in the game, right? They got this ward, you know, in the, the mid tier two, they took like this insane initiation where they killed Seb before the fight began, but they just they just didn't have the damage. This game, I think they solved a lot of their problems. Io with Luna is a very high damage combo. You amplify not only his right clicks, but also the magic damage that comes out of Luna. So I think a lot of that is solved for Nygma this game. Oxo, she's running into them though. Yeah, this would be a big pickoff if they could find it right at the start of it. As they run on in, find the Lucid Beam. Soxa, you're in some trouble, buddy. Nobody's there to help you. Uh, and I, I, I'm pretty sure that there's no way he gets out of this one. Yeah, there's the body. <laughs> the <box. laughs> Soxa. His own team is tipping him right now. It's like, what are you doing, man? You're all weird. Uh, so Miracle will get first blood, and that's going to be big. You know, the panel talked about the need to make sure that uh, they had a good start. Stay together. Stay together. For sure. I think I'm a bit worried about Nygma's top lane, to be honest. I think that one might get really hard with the Lion Centaur against CKA. Right. But mid lane, Tiny has always been pretty decent versus Puck. I mean, usually Puck slightly out farms, so Tiny has really good timings on him with the Blink Dagger. But with the first button, the like, I think begins. Miracle should do very well. Especially, like, he outplayed Thompson last game mid, straight up hard. And I think, most importantly, Luna, Luna Isle should free farm bottom. Okay. Well, it'll be something to watch for, for sure. You know, I, I, I've played, I think, about 150 games of Darkseer in the past couple of months. Uh, and one of the main people that I watched, the two main people that I watched was Mind Control and Seb, um, whenever they play it. And Seb, he, when he plays, he tends to play in like this more carry Darkseer style, which could get shut down a little bit here if they're able to put a ton of pressure onto him. I mean, obviously, it's great against the Luna, but you can see already, like, this hero, it definitely struggles against like that early harassment. It could be tough. Let's see how he does, deals with it. So you played a lot of Darkseer games. How often did you not show the first wing? Uh, never. Literally okay, never. Because Seb only <laughs> showed it after the piece of bat. Like he, he didn't do it earlier. Right. Which I think is it's not standard. I have no idea what the idea is. I don't play the hero, but... Uh, I think it's that he wanted to make sure that the clock could get the pull through, and he's okay, going to die for this though. one. So the, the, he'll die for this, but what does end up happening is at least they get that pull back over to the tier one tower. Um, whereas otherwise, maybe the IO could have harassed him a little bit more. Yeah, and Thumb getting the pull to this area, especially by the Aisha, they're going to build a huge double. Whoa. But up top, they find the kill. Nice combo there. Mind Control takes down No Tail. Interesting. Yeah, this double wave, though, down bottom is, is sort of uh, going to be a bit of an issue. That's a cool idea. Like, you don't push it in too fast. So your clock gets a pull, and then you build this huge wave. And, like, even though Darkstar is supposed to be really weak at this level, perhaps you can get pressure off just because you have so many creeps of Iron Shell. Yep. Uh, you know, Io, definitely not the type of hero that's going to be able to, like, sort of mass push out uh, in turn as well. So they're doing a good job of that and also have access to this pull. So they're going to get that pull off as well. Uh, maybe deny out a couple of creeps here. Mage comes a bit too late to block that out. That kill top, I want to mention how huge that is for Team Enigma. I think this is the lane that, on paper, CK is going to free farm and pressure Centaur. I mean, Centaur still has one CS, so it's, it's still a really hard lane. But mm. it means a lot to just get that kill. What CS though? Oh my goodness, I didn't think it'd be this bad. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a little <laughs> wild. I mean, Tentar has definitely fallen out of favor, but uh, we'll see. I mean, he's still getting like some XP at least. He's staying fairly even with them in that regard. There haven't been a ton of denies yet. Um, but a very interesting start to this game uh, up here in this top side. And going to be able to get the Cold Feet proc there onto Kuro. Most likely, now he gets away from it. Fine. The good thing for Centaur right now, though, even though he had such low CS, now he sort of has a lane equilibrium. If Curl can manage to... Oh, he's going for the stacks instead of blocking the pole. Okay. But if he can get to his ring of health, he should be fine in this lane. I, I don't see CK versus Centaur much this patch anymore. 
Yeah, we're not seeing a lot of CK, except a couple of times, like, in the offlane on occasion. Uh, but it, it is going to be, like, a ton of damage out there. Like, if you can find the Io at the start of the fight, uh, there aren't heroes that really blow it up as, as effectively as a CK just stacked out with items. For sure. I mean, think what they do have a lot of AoE stuns and just AoE damage with the tiny little center together. Oh, wait, IOTW's Curse is walking in here. Uh, uh, IOTW also under fire here with the double Ion Shell. There's going to be the backing back, and that's the kill. Level 3 Darkseer, along with Clockwork, is scary stuff. And that was Luna's boots on the Courier, one of the most important items against Darkseer lanes, because as soon as you have boots, the Ion Shell creeps don't do damage. Oh, wait. Miracle. Dude, that's big. That's really, really big. Both games solo killing Thompson. Really showing a, a return to form. I mean, everyone knows Miracle is one of the greats, but. They oh find no goodness. kill as well. Mind control does go down, and now the turnaround here. Tumail has to back out for the moment as Kuro's gonna drain all of his mana and grab a couple of denies, but just an absolute bloodbath in the early going. And I think Nigma, they're, they're really showing up to these lanes. I mean, the first blood propelling Miracle probably into solo killing Thompson. He's level six and Thompson's level four. I think usually when we see this matchup, Puck is actually <laughs> slightly ahead in CS and network because Tiny has to buy additional regen. Ooh, good silence there by Thompson. That stops the toss back, which might have caused a little bit of uh, scary things going on. But yeah, it, it's interesting. There's so much kill potential in these ones. It, it wasn't, it, I definitely wasn't expecting mid to be where they would go for it. Soxa, he's sneaking back around bottom. He, he doesn't go for any play here because there's just too many radiant creeps there. A bit too scary. They can come in and still uh, farm pretty effectively. And you can see 21, 22 CS now for the Darkseer and a couple there on Soxa as well. Um, the other thing that we've occasionally seen these players do is just like throw an Iron Shell on the clock and then you can go around and farm camps as well. So that gives you a little bit of extra farm. Miracle farms out there and Kuro just barely able to get away. Sumail chasing a little bit there. But won't be able to make anything happen. Despite the two kills on AA, top lane is still looking very hard for Nygma, though. You can see CK, he has a full 800 gold on the Centaur. They are, honestly, this is sort of expected, though, in the draft. Like, when they pick Centaur, they sort of knew the lane was going to be ribbing. Uh, so they can definitely come back. Like, this was already accounted for in the draft. Meanwhile, some more pressure being mounted there onto Topson in the mid lane. Miracle uh, struggling. Uh, to actually get a firm hold on him, but he's still, you know, putting the pressure on definitely and staying uh, almost a full level ahead. Uh, there is this rotation over from Soxa as he's stacking up the camps. I don't know if he's going to try and make anything happen, but the pullback up top onto Mind Control. They got him caught and killed. They will take down No Tail, but again, losing that Centaur. That's three deaths now for MC. Just with three, two deaths. I can't read. Sorry, no two problem. deaths on MC before he can get out to that blink dagger. Uh, sorry, to the vanguard. It's a huge <laughs> deal. And Tiny's actually crushing mid with the wagon. He's a full wave here. Radiant also has a glyph for Thompson spam here. I think. Now looking for it. Oh, doesn't decide to go. Instead, just throws a toss. Does a little ring around the rosy action. They have the that coil afterwards. Do have the illusion rune, but snaps the coil, tried to time that perfectly, backs away, right click, trying to finish it off, Soxa dies in the meantime, but Miracle backing out, bottling up, has fairy fire, I think he's good. He's even going for a kill at no time, Seb, he's sticking around. Seb, right click, tries to go for the kill with the iron shell, it's not quite enough down bottom, but they're going in again like you talk about, thinks about killing off no tail, have a toss, oh, barely able to live there. <laughs> And they got super low down bottom as well. So just a very skirmishy game, even though nobody dies in that exchange. I think even Centaur got gone on during that. And there's just action everywhere. Yeah. So it's just feeling like the pace of the game that we're seeing. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Be there. Definitely an accomplished IO player on GH, <laughs> but still a bit behind No Tail, who's definitely the specialist that we've known from the past. But regardless, still nothing really to write home about as far as like any rotations or anything else that uh, we're gonna see. It feels like it's just these very brawly lanes. <laughs> I mean, where do you where do you anticipate as uh, we're gonna see another stun up top and actually a chance to go here on Sumail? They have Miracle's TPing up top as well. Hex afterwards. 
not quite enough mana. 20 away on the lion. Dying. Oh, I think he smelled like a cough by Miracle here. He's playing a little bit greedy. Yeah, Avalanche comes out looking for that toss afterwards. <laughs> and the punch down, but the fairy fire. Turn, Kuro. Oh, he's getting slowed by the ghost. Oh no, the neutral keeps creeping Sumail alive. Miracle still Some going. Time for this kill, actually. Sumail, does he realize it? Tries to hide away. They got faced with some tiny, and that might be enough. He's diving back by the tier three tower. Can they get the kill though? Still in two seconds. Kuro dies to Thompson. Miracle is not stopping. I want you, I'm coming for you. The kill, it connects. Yo, this guy has no chill. As is, is he gonna turn on Moto too? He's gonna turn his middle tower. Oh no. All right, yeah. There's Dyer's some tips going out right there. So, Lion also died to OG. They did a counter smoke to top. They didn't expect Miracle. You know, it's eight minutes and he literally dove a tier three. Ooh. It's very easy to mess up when you only have number one nation. Hex is there. <laughs> That's the mess up that they needed. And Nygma will end up finding themselves the kill on top send. At this point, his second death in the early going. And they've also managed to rotate IOTW. He has four points in aura already, so it looks like they'll push top tower pretty quickly here. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Oh, maybe not. They're actually defending bottom. This is probably the right choice. You know, MC, he's had a hard lane. You can't, like, sack more of his game than you already have. Now he's just going to sit bottom and try to get whatever he can. Well, OG's game plan is a lot around killing the center now. Yeah, you can even see Puck's teeping down here. Iron Shell's going to be there. Oh... Dyer's but the rotation, Miracle playing with GH. Who do they find? Topson's there. This is all underneath some wardage. And Silence comes out. Zoxa tries to connect. They have the wall down afterwards. This is going to be enough, though. Pull back in. Miracle dropping down low and going to fall. My control tried to go for a kill on the Zoxa, but it's not going to happen. OG make the right play. Move on in. Now looking to Radiance take down mind control. Can they kill him underneath the tower? They have another round of surge. Seb going in. Does have Iron Shell on him in the slow, steady beatdown. It's enough. Are you ready to run? It's a really good sequence of events for OG there. They actually managed to break the coil with Soxa's power phones. And, you know, Radiance Nygma, they have the right idea. They're going to come attack. defend the tower. But the place where they fought, it didn't really give them any advantage. You know, if you fight closer to the tower, Radiance there's going to be TPS from Luna, attack. some additional resources able to be committed. OG sort of take the fight away from the tower, and as a result, they Dyer's win the fight. However, IOTW was farming up a storm Dyer's during all of that. He took top tower, attack. he farmed it all the enemy's Radiance jungle, and now he's crushing mid tower. Well, and you know, you, you talk about sort of putting these heroes, these players on heroes that are comfortable. But oh, the hook shot in. The catch afterwards. Ice Blast is trying to bring them down low. Miracle dead. ILTW dead. They didn't stand a chance. OG came in in style. And now they're going to kill the IO on the backside, too. That's that new relocate. You can't save from situations like these. Yeah. No, not at all. GH trying to get out of there, but it's not going to happen. A double kill, and they're, they're even bullying Kuro back. They just brought numbers. Radiance middle tower. Maybe a little attack. too ambitious hitting the mid tower. They knew that Dyer's A was going to get six. I, I didn't attack. quite see if he got the total knowledge, but I would assume so, because Saxa was quite high level. And OG, they get the good punish. Nigma, they do get a little bit of compensation. Every time one of these bad fights happen, first time, Luna got all of top. The second time, Centaur got a lot of cash out space there, but still. They were pretty good on Nygma, but now, I don't know, Miracle, his, he played the lane so well, and now his lick is way more delayed than it should have been with his start. Right, absolutely. It's uh, it's feeling a little bit uh, troubling right now, and you can tell like how much emphasis they want to put on this tower, but with this big tanky CK that can stand just right in front along with Soxa, it's, like, it's so hard to actually make a move like this. Um, and you know, the Darkseer, he, he's got himself back wall ready to go along with Surge. It's enabling Sumail to do so much more than he might have otherwise been able to. So, Miracle, ILTW, and GH up top. <laughs> Kuro is starting to make that move over, but it, it looks like they might catch him here. Hookshot in again, finds on to GH. They wanted to get ILTW, but they'll settle for the Isle. I keep my enemies. Will they? But they're looking for more. Thought about it. They see Miracle now TPing out. Ah, he's away. Heads up play there by Miracle. This is OG's timing. They have the level four Iron Shell. They had hookup. 
Nigma, they really needed to dodge him there. I think they're very happy with only a West dying. Miracle's only 100 gold from his Blink Dagger now. And once they get that, it's going to be gold time for them as well. Down bottom. See here as well uh, that they are still trying to get towards those first couple survivability items for Centaur. Radiant's top tower is under attack. And you know, a little bit of a, not an extensive hero, uh, history on this hero for Sumail, but he's certainly playing it well. Uh, currently third in net worth, and they're going to move forward and try and take this tower again. Glyph comes early, anticipating that move, and that stops them from getting in it. Oh, miracle. Tempting fate right now. Not going to go in. That, that looked a little bit weird, though. Tiny, he got his blink dagger, he tp in, and he just sort of walked up and showed his blink. I think normally, like, Kuroki has a smoke, Miracle got blink. Normally, you see them just smoke up the two of them and have a combo plus <laughs> finger anyone, and they would get a kill. So maybe a little bit... I, I don't know what happened to comms there. Maybe he really wanted that tower last set, and they wanted to secure it. But a bit unfortunate for Team Nygma there. True enough. And you can see afterwards, he immediately queues up the hand of Midas. Uh, Miracle feels like he needs to scale this game. And to be fair, like, I, I feel like LGW is definitely, you know, farming quite effectively in this game. Uh, are, are you worried at all about these heroes falling off? Does the Midas feel like a sort of a, a, a desperation at all? Or do you think that this was kind of his plan all along? They're, they're smoking up top here, so oh, okay. I'll give a thought after that. Yeah, looking for him. They have the opening. Sasha, oh, LTW gets a shot on. Relocate, tries to get him out. Not going to be in time. Dyer's middle the age can't attack. save him. You get caught and like they know about the relocate as well. No tell scouted him out with the Vortex. Oh, man. That's crazy. Oh, jeez. They even have the Luna Illusion afterwards. It's going to beat GH to death. Right clicking him down. Well, they talked to him as an invisor and he's scouting out the Nigma heroes. They know about this rotation coming in. Snail hides away, keeps himself safe. I mean, a lot of heroes went top though. There isn't that easy rotation for a punish, but if Miracle gets a bit too far out here, Coil comes down and now he's in a world of hurt. Okay, a little bit of a separation though. Mind control comes back in, trying to buy a little bit of time. Curl there as well, finds the scope on the goal. Combo, trying to kill him off, and they take down Thompson. That is exactly what Nygma needed. Really good reaction from Crow here. That was a fast TP scroll. He gets off that the full Ravage there, and they turn around what could have been potentially a disaster. So to answer your question about uh, the Midas on Tiny, I think it's a really good choice, because if you look at the heroes on Dire, it's really hard to 1v5 their lineup. They have Darkseer, AA, and even, even some Egg and Puck coming out eventually. IOTW does not want to be the only threat because he will get all in over and over, and it's hard for Nigma's line lineup to defend him. Okay. I mean, theoretically, you can get some really good relocate save, you know, clutch the fight, but you don't want your fight to be, we can only win if GL GH outplays the enemy, you know, if, if Soxa doesn't hook him, if um, Thompson doesn't get a blink coil on the relocating Wisp. It just makes the, 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 the win state too difficult to achieve, definitely. Well, at least for now, it's not feeling like the same type of run over that we had in game number one. Uh, and we'll see if OG can uh, sort of continue the good play and rotations and, and what this turns into in the next couple of minutes as well. Uh, because we are going to start hitting some of these item timings that will come out. You know, whether that's going to be the pipe gun for Darkseer or Blink Dagger, whatever he ends up going for eventually. In the meantime, Sox is actually working on a, an Aghanim. Uh, has one in a <laughs> one component completed at the very least. And Soxa, Avatos, combo comes out, trying to bring him down low. Seb, big vacuum wall afterwards with the coil. Quick back over the He catches on the boat. They just get blown up. Yet again. Dude, this is a level two vacuum when they're doing that. Maybe he's middle yeah. down. Soxa, what up? He's really. Like that turnaround, you know, he gets called on and his reaction is to hook into the enemy team. It buys him enough time. If he doesn't get that hook off, I, I don't think you kill the heroes the same way. It buys time for Thompson to get that triple coil vacuum. And, you know, OG, that's three kills. That's the biggest tower on the map for them, I think, just how their heroes play. And they really needed that because eventually Luna will all farm the heroes on Dire if nothing happens, if the map doesn't open up with his own, like, you know, Nigma taking the mid and top tower so they have more space on the map to do stuff. And they have no tower push on OG, so that was huge for them, that fight. Well, up top again. Some more 
playing around, flirting Miracle's with uh, Greatness there, looking for Yeah, he wants this kill. Avalanche, good. Phase shift, though. Looking for the toss back afterwards. Not going to happen. They rotate in Sumail now as well. Miracle's got to be careful. They catch sight of him. So much vision right now. And Miracle, Blink Dagger off cooldown. Three seconds, it's not going to be in time. Off the way, LTW trying to get up close to go for the hit. But there's going to be the tether. GH now the one that's in trouble. But off that next, now the turn for the fight. Well, they're on to two hooks on afterwards. Sasa gets the pushback. They have the Eclipse. Sasa starting to fall down. And he will eventually get ran down here, maybe? Well, trying to. Girl off to the side. He's if they can find him. Soxa hidden away in the trees. No, there's no way. Surely he does not get out right now. Stay hidden. Just don't go anywhere. You're fine. You know, is he really gonna get out? Alright, they got him. They got him. <laughs> that is a sick juice spawn. That's crazy. I have never seen that one before. I mean they do find him because LTW, he, he's hunting him, you know, he plays literally 40 pubs a day, so he knows about all the juke spots that people try against him. Well, in Clockwork TP top, right? Like, they, they had True. to oh, they, they didn't, didn't actually have to be. Damn. He walked, okay. okay. Money changes hands. I gotta say, though, Kuroki, when you look at Nigma's, uh, their players, you don't think that Kuroki's the one going to, be, like, having the super high impact, these clutch plays, but this game, I think, he's done some fantastic moves. I mean, that TP bottom into the Ravage, always in the right place at the right time as, you know, Thompson, he goes in ready to cast some spells. He just gets hexed by this five position line with no <laughs> items. It completely changes the game. Absolutely. Uh, this, this blink online now catches some vision there. Soxa going for the wraparound. And they're immediately going to deward the wards. As they pull back in, Pop the ulti, hook shot afterwards. Kuro, the stun, not good enough though. Foil, back, back, on to four. It's too much damage coming out from OG as they chase him down one by one. Miracle trying to escape, but they pull him back in again. Sumail with the chase down, and, and they're not stopping. I, I, they've got everything that they need. Another pullback, another stun Sumail. Only gives up the chase, ice blast afterwards gonna apply itself onto ILTW, but they kill off GH. And dude, when, when these combos come out from Darkseer, it is just devastating. Has I thought they were crazy. They're jumping this hood Vanguard Centaur at his mid tower. But OG, they, they just poke in. They don't cast any of their big spells on Centaur, so just poke him, you know, CK Sun, Silence, some minus armor from Reality Rift, and they just connect with the big combo there. Really good understanding of how to take the team fight, and that was like that was IOTW's nine second BKB timing. <laughs> He's crazy. It's insane. Chase down. Wanna kill him? Not gonna get him. Again. You know, I, I, such a boss. <laughs> he really is. He's died four times, doesn't care. He's just there, like, going to mess two with him. There's three Blink Daggers, two of them with instant suns on the Radiant team, and he's just solo around the enemy tier two. There's yeah. no real gain there, but you can do mental damage, just mess with them. Force out TPs. Like, look at the map right now. There's five Radiant heroes all around that tier two because of what Thompson did. What you want to see, definitely. Now, Enigma, like you mentioned, all those blink daggers means there's a lot of potential for initiation, and the wraparound's coming right now. Trying to find Topson, they look up high ground. No, he's on the low ground. He gets away. Oh, that smoke break, and then the rocket flare right on top of him. You know, it, it's interesting, right? They have so much of these heroes on OG to just keep everybody inside this one area, you know, whether it's the coil or the cogs or the vacuum. And then it just feels like uh, Sumail's all that damage afterwards. And they jump forward. They're going to find Kuro. Three swipes and an ice blast. And he's done. They're so going, though. They want to find out TW here. He does have Blink off in three seconds on CK. Come forward, catches them, breaks it, has the BKB, doesn't use it. Vacuum afterwards, in some trouble, there's not enough healing in the world. LTW gonna TP out of there, will it be able to escape? As Miracle also jumps back, it only ends up being the two supports. That actually is some value for Nigma at the very least. They did use wall, I think. OG, they might take Roshan at some... I mean, the Roshan's not too bad. They're just opting to control the map. They don't want to farm such a big neutral creep when they're allied. Are they going okay. for Roshan? <laughs> okay, because I was going to say, Iron Shell is really Radiant good against Roshan. But a little bit of hesitation as they farm the enemy ancients. I wonder if that's going to come up to bite them. Yeah, it's still so fast. But you know, yeah. That last 
the last smoke by OG, it was such a smart smoke because Nigma, you know, Thompson forced all of the mid. He saw, they sort of, I don't know how many of the heroes they saw, but they understood that as soon as they broke that smoke, all the silence were pushing it. They smoke, and if your silence are pushing it when you smoke, you're going to find something. The enemy just has too many things to react to on the map. Peeps give you vision and information about where your opponent is. And reading that, they just went to enemy triangle. They get. The support kills, but more important, they secure the road shot for themselves. Well, and you know, Nygma now doing the exact same thing. With the lanes pushing in, they go out for a quick and easy pick off there into the triangle, and then manage to pop the stampede to get out afterwards. So, uh, even though they lose that roach, they manage to find something else. And now, gonna go for round two. They don't have a centaur with them, and they also I mean, don't have stampede. They have a really good ward, though. Can they find? Sumail is a tough kill. Sumail is a really hard kill, but Thompson, that's a little bit easier. That's a potential, that's a chance, but it's good enough. And now the buyback, and they drop down that coil afterwards. Trying to turn, they pull it back in. I don't think W gets TP broken. They have to fight now, but there's nothing left to fight. They're all just gonna get dropped down. Torn apart again, four dead in the middle. <laughs> And OG, they're just on top of it. The instant they initiate onto Thompson, the buyback to the socks. They have a really good read of these fights. And you know, Thompson, he, I think he was dead there, but a little bit of miscommunication from between IOTW and, and uh, Miracle there. Miracle wanted to get into melee range for that toss, and you know, the, the, where they went on uh, Thompson was just so awkward. He couldn't get past his Luna, who's trying to hit him in confusion. And as a result, Thompson lives, and they just fight Big Man. God, and you see right now, Sumail is bringing out the Desolator. Because why not? Uh, that's apparently what he's decided his item is. Uh, and how often do you see a CK old form of Luna? Yeah. He has a clean talent at 15, but this is not some like low farm Luna who lost her lane. She died once a lane, but I think she was 7k when everyone else in the game was 5k in terms of network. This is just King. aggression okay. plus taking the valuable farm away from your opponents coming out from OG, leading to this hero who shouldn't have this much farm. All farming what is usually the fastest farming hero in Dota. Well, that is a, uh, a struggle right now for Nygma. You know, we, we came in expecting this one to be close, and this game definitely a lot closer, but it still feels like OG are making all of the right moves. Pulls him out there to snap the coil and trying to bring him down. They're just always there, always right on top of each other, but a little bit of an overextension to mail no tail they're in the area ah, they can't go and again with the ages you just can't go all in like that on the CK. <laughs> you know it, it's interesting i was kind of wondering if we we're going to see out of ltw that uh build that you've been talking about so much the ame build but uh feeling like he just has to go for this like manta dragonlance bkb in this one yeah, and it's just hard. I mean, he, the reason why his farm fell off of it is because he did buy that early BKB in order to take the team fight. Right. But they lost that first team fight with his 9 second BKB, and it really reflects on the rest of the game. And that works. just looks hard. And OG, they're just. Just Well, the next round, they are around this area. No vision at all. Jamal jumps forward. Good Manta. Back away. LTW gonna get relocated. Now, this does mean Io is very vulnerable. Are scanning. And on the other side, Miracle. Oh, they scan! Dude, they know he's over there! Oh my goodness! And now isolated away from the rest of his team. Miracle's gonna go down. Thompson gives him the tip. A good stun! He clips afterwards. Thompson drops as well. That is what Nigma needed. <laughs> now maybe a chance for more. Kuro doing ring around the Rosie. Who gets locked down? They pull him back on the other side. Now LCW pops the BKB, turning to try and fight this one. They buy back on the Lion, trying to run down Sumail. This is going to be the Aegis. But can they find anything else afterwards? Dark's here. Find back. Force staff up and away. Good jump in from my control. Seth. He's going to turn his way back him afterwards. But there's no follow up. Finger Seth comes out. Sumail is dead. Seth bought back for this one. And now trying to find another round of it. Nigma streaming forward. They take down Seb. That is a dieback. <laughs> <laughs> they just want to fight against Aegis, against a core buyback. Just really good punishing of uh, OG when they went too far. And you can even see this Radiant has their own ward between the tier 2 and tier 3 bottom. And that's what sort of let them win this fight. Seb wasn't expecting them to have full vision on them coming in. And Kroki, again, he gets the hex off, he gets the stun off. He dies for the t his team in that fight and buys back, but. 
he really clutches it there and that's a huge swing. Now Luna above CK and net worth. Now they have these items. You know, MC he was sacked in this game. He really made a comeback and he landed yes. some good stomps Dyer's in that fight. And, and now, like, this this is the type of hero that Dyer's can punish you so quickly on this Luna. Attack. You You've also got the Crimson Guard now finished up for the Centaur, so that can help to deal Dyer's with some of, like, the illusion Dyer's damage attack. that's gonna come in from the Darkseer as well as from the CK. Uh, th this is this is not insignificant. Darkseer's dead for 40 more Dyer's seconds. Nygma, take down that Tier 2 tower and now can take control of the Outpost uh, as well as this top Tier 2. What a turnaround. Oh, it takes King. Uh, yeah, seventh Desolator on CK. I wonder if he's uh, regretting that a little Dyer's bit right now. Oh, um, yeah, it's just not looking so hot now. You know, the cores on the enemy team all have a lot of armor. Mind Control opted for that Crimson Guard. He has a Dragon Scale picked up. Luna just naturally tanky, and Tiny has his LT. So, not sure King's feeling the Deso still. 20 to 30 in terms of kill score. <laughs> there is still this great ward that's towards mid, which I, I think Nigma should know about. They spotted it on a sentry ward that got dewarded uh, right in front of their creep wave, but it hasn't been taken out yet. Um, but besides that, there's like no vision on the map at all for either team. <laughs> Very it's just been awkward. so many battles. All the wards are placed in the fights, yeah. which generally also get dewarded. Cool little relocate Dyer's plays by LTW, who uh, gets relocated to the bottom just to push this out and try and pressure the tower. Now they are coming back to their triangle. This is where they have a bit of vision. Radiance Curry has been killed. Thinking about going in. They're all over here. Mind Control has a good opening. Jumps forward, stomp is out. Stampede afterwards. Look, John misses. They find the wall down on top of ILCW, but the right click coming through to mail. He doesn't have that much left in the tank, but it gets a huge heal. Last afterwards, good hits for the control, but is it going to be enough? Oil afterwards drop down, they pull him away, and ILCW is dead. Now GH also left alone, tries to get out of there, and stuck up on the cliff, but there's the Avatar to kill off to mail. Miracle able to salvage his first team, they take down Thompson as well. One by one, OG start losing their lives, and none of these heroes have buyback. The chase, looking for no kill, they find him. And uh, just an overextension, and Miracle is becoming a problem for this OG team. But Miracle is really taking over the game. He's just so patient there. He waits his time, even after the fight is supposed to be lost. You know, OG are talking about, okay, we won the fight, let's go push out lanes. What, what objective can we get? They're not ready for Miracle to sort of just jump in. And this Midas at this point, it's really paying off. He has a Quiver, he has a Midas, and He's scaling a lot. I also want to mention that Soxa, he had excellent targeting in that fight. They jumped the Chaos Knight, and he should have died there. But he hooked Lion before the Impale or the Finger Death could come out. Got some AO out. Uh, didn't mean much as Miracle, you know, he destroyed them after that. But really well played by him there. It looks like it. They still don't have ZK for another 20 afterwards. I mean, it's slow. You don't have that shard yet uh, done for Miracle. Solar Crest and Overcharge, though. He's just easing yeah. away. So they take the melee racks and then get out. Uh, Roche, two minutes away. So sort of middle of the time, uh, road timer. And they're going to have to deal with their lanes on the side of Nygma. But OG losing this huge lead now. It feels like Nygma are the ones that are in a little bit of control. Look at that swing back. Just a couple of overextensions, and that's all it takes against this Luna lineup. And I think historically, CK used to be pretty good versus Luna. She didn't have a real way to clear the illusions, they just became too tanky. But now, ILTW, he's picked up the Datos, he's picked up the Shard, he breaks the smoke on the beam there, unfortunate. But it's a lot of damage into the CK illusions, and Sumail, he doesn't have heart or Scotty like a normal scene. He has a Desolator. So yeah. he's very low on the tank ability compared to the standard build. And granted, like with all of this armor that you have on GH, like if he can find him at the start, then, you know, maybe to some extent you can start justifying the death later. I mean, it might be some copium, but that's fine. Uh, it's perfectly okay to have that in your system at this point. As they walk forward, Miracle picks up the Invis rune, and both teams know this next couple of minutes, it's all about the Roche. Uh, you have great vision on the side of OG for scouting it out with the clockwork and everything else, but it feels like. The, the, this like relocate synergy that we're seeing. Oh wait, they relocated, but look at OG. They're trying to come and contest right now. 
With the relocate down, Hookshot off the mark. Miracle able to break it. Avalanche cross catching up to one. Alcw to come back in. Vacuum wall tries to get out. Alcw trying to break down two mail. Is it going to be enough? Yes, they take him down. GH still there on top of Ice Blast. Only a quarter of the duration left. It's Upton. See if he can kill off GH. It's not going to happen. They don't get him. They take down four Enigma. They will not be denied. Seb trying to get away. Ooh, by the skin of his teeth, he's going to get out of there. Still slow, though. And they're looking for him. Want to bring down the pesky Darkseer. Hides off to the side, gets the blink away. Drops down the floor, looking for any opening. He doesn't have it a doesn't TP. See him. <laughs> they don't down. quite spot him. You just really look looking. They're going to they're gonna see him because his courier's going to come. Oh, eh, 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 sees him. Hello. <laughs> the other side. Yo, you go into showcase mode. They're face to face, nose to nose. But they do see the courier now. Now Kuro's going to realize. Did he get out of there? Throws out that stud. Jumps in. Finds it afterwards. They still spot him. And Seb back to the way, trying to escape Hex afterwards. Bottom lane, they're taking racks. In the meantime, while all this is going on, they're keeping the Darkseer out of the fight. And it looks like eventually they will be able to bring down Seb. The relocate goes out. Unreal. Where did Isle relocate from? He relocated from top lane to, to bottom. No, no, he really kind of from, bo from bottom. He, he's oh, okay, got it. Got it. So he, they did run back on the fog. I was a little bit worried there, but man, RTW, <laughs> he, he almost has his butterfly. I don't think CK is scaling this game at all. I don't know if it's Desolator purchase, maybe a little bit too uh, assured in their victory from OG, but he hasn't picked up a new item since that Desolator. He's only got that Reaver, not the full heart. And meanwhile, RTW, he was behind CK when he was at 15k net worth, CK was 16k net worth. Now CK is 17k net worth and he's at 25k. He's picked up 10k more than CK's picked up 1k. Yeah, it, it has just been a dropping off a cliff, or rather staying flat uh, on the net worth as Miracle in the mid lane finds himself Doxa looking for that beatdown. Not gonna quite come in time, and that's a blast down. You know, I have not heard that many chat lines coming out from a certain team in the last couple minutes as it is uh, falling apart a little bit. 35 yeah. minutes in. Go. A little bit of the same problems that plagued Nygma last game. Like right now, I don't think OG have the damage. It's a reverse situation. Thompson, he's gone for this Egg and the Scepter. Like all the items, it made sense when you're winning the game. Radiant you have Desolator to hit again. buildings, Egg and the Scepter, you just control them and you have damage with Darkseid and CK. But <laughs> man, they're gonna need a huge vacuum wall to win these team fights at this point. Right. Well, and he does have the level 20 talent. So maximum amounts of Ion Shells on all of his heroes. Um, it's it's a ridiculous amount of damage. You know, you, you get four Ion Shells on Dyer's that's, what, down. 600 damage per second? Uh, magical damage. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of damage. Um, it's like a freaking Luna Blade Dyer's per second almost, is what it feels like. But the question is, can you stand on top of ILTW? Can you stand on top of Miracle without dying before the Ion Shell kills him? And that's something I'm not Dyer's sure of. Is under attack. As we set ourselves and look at the pressure that's coming to high ground, Sumail has the heart done. 5,000 HP with heart on. And you can see that Nigma, they are respecting this. The potential, uh, like, eviscerating team fight that could come out this way. The jump in, the hook shot, they find out. He pushes them out of the nice flat. Goes into the sun. And now Turney trying to fight this one. Sumail, he's just getting. Reddit, absolutely torn asunder. Miracle, eyes on Sumail, wants to bring him down. Can't quite get it though. ILTW does manage to kill off Soxa. And now Avalanche, Ross, keep going for more. Miracle looking for Thompson, see if he can find him. Jump forward, silence, it's a slow end. Will be able to get out of there, but they lost the clock and they use wall. This is gonna be a hard hold up top. Did Okay, so OG had a random ward on the high ground that let them take this, that fight, but honestly, I think they should feel knuckle. Oh, they got uh, what? LTW just, just loses the Aegis. Uh, do they have anything else afterwards for him, though? It doesn't look like it. This was That was still two minutes left on that one. And with no creeps that were coming through mid, suddenly you've got an awkward situation now where they can't really push. 
very, very, yeah, that, that is their win condition. Dyer's Every time you play hard carry against each apparition, the way you win the game is, I mean, either you have multiple Radiant's cores, like, you know, top Miracle Score and Lord Minus, or you just have the Aegis of the Immortals, so the Ice Pass doesn't do the same thing. Really good, like, he walked up to the high ground sort of unprepared, <laughs> and OG were ready. They snipe that out, and because of that, they get they still get to play Dota in this game. See what uh, they can manage to find. I mean, we've got that next tier of items, and uh, not just neutrals, but also just regular old items. We've got ourselves, what was that? Uh, an Aeon Disc, I think I saw. We've got Crimson Guards finished also. A Aghanims on Luna. Yeah. Aghanims on top Flicker. Very nice this game. Oh. That's that's ridiculous. That shouldn't exist. <laughs> I guess, I mean, get to the call, because that's what I was thinking. But Soxa, he already has the Aghanims. I mean, he's had it for a while. That's a long chain stun, so... He's opting to go for the Trickster Cloak. Maybe it can save him from the single target bait burst damage coming out of OG. It's going to be really tough, though. Like, it, I mean, I feel like Nygma just have to play so spread at all times because if you get, like, a Puck Ags Coil into Vacuum breaking it, it that's that's just game right there almost, it feels like. Radiant's bottom tower yeah, for sure. Under attack. The thing they do have going for them, though, with the Zagamims is they have a lot of instant stuns, mm. and there are no real saves coming out from OG. I mean, no tell he has one force staff, but it, it's probably not enough against one Aghanim's Eclipse on a stunned unit. They awesome. will just die. True enough. Well, the smoke up now going cross map. Enigma, hoping to find somebody. Soxa is here, but he is sort of playing down on the bottom side of this one, it looks like. And we'll see if they're able to catch him. They saw the rocket flare going over, but it sort of it looks like he's making the move down. But they ping right on top of him. If he doesn't start TPing soon, he's actually dead. And GH throwing out those small Soxa looking to get out of there. They spot him. Got him. A nice catch there by Nygma. So they commit fully to that smoke and bring down the clock. Careful. Recently, TP's in. Doesn't want to give up that outpost for free. They really want to commit to get that one, and they do get it. The Centaur teaming in two. The rest of the team can't come there, but the relocation, that's going out. No Last afterwards, buyback comes out now from the clockwork. Looking to try and bring down Kumail. He's completely isolated, completely alone, nowhere to go. Dead with no buyback, and they are right outside the base. Hook shot in, but there's the fourth staff away. And now focusing down Seb. Does not have anywhere left to go? Avalanche, toss, finger, and done. Another round, and Soxa desperately trying to stop this push. Look at this play here. Hook shot in, takes out the creeps, needs to get this catapult. They gotta kill these catapults here. And will they be able to get it in time? There's the call to push back. One catapult remains with 50 HP, but they're able to get it. Dude, that salvages the game. Soxa literally saving them. Yeah, it's easy to get the second wave as well, but it won't quite be in time. Is there any way that OG can kill that one off? And there, there's no buyback on the thing. He was such an integral part of the fight. And Topton, he's running mid here, trying to get that wave. I'm not sure he's gonna make it in time. Yeah, he's looking for it. This, this is Luna versus buildings, guys. I know, they're, they're already hitting the tier four tower and Topson has to get it. They jump in, they hex him though. They find Topson. They're gonna pop the cliff afterwards to try and slow this down. But with no Sumail for another 25 seconds, Nigma gonna try and take this down. With Tiny and Luna, it is so difficult to stop. They're 15 seconds away from having the wall back up. But Seb, he's under control. He gets blown up, 100 seconds without him. The Puck tries to stop this pressure, but it is not going to happen. Eyes on the prize. GG called. OG threw one away, and Nygma picked it up. For sure. And I mean, as much as it might seem like OG, they lost this big lead. Obviously, Nygma's play was...